Hi, this is Enno from the Alpaca team. I'd like to talk to you about the latest release we did for Alpaca, which was the 1.0 release. Alpaca is a reactive enterprise integration library for Java and Scala based on reactive streams and ACA. In short, you could say it gives you endpoints for ACA streams to connect to other technologies. Alpaca is a member of the ACA family and the base on the of these projects is ACA with the ECTO model implementation on the JVM. On top of ACA Actors, we have ACA Streams, which implement the reactive stream standard. And on top of ACA Streams, we have ACA HTTP, which implements a fully reactive ACA HTTP server and client. And around ACA, we have a few other modules that make distributed system development much easier. And the most important topic today is Alka Alpaca, which gives you integration endpoints for Alka Streams. Let me shortly look into the history of Alpaca. It started in 2016, as when the idea to bring reactive streams to enterprise integration started. But even earlier, we had Alpaca Kafka started under the, a different name then in 2015. And that stage, Alka Streams was still experimental. But people saw the potential of connecting reactive streams and Kafka in that situation. And the Akka team tried to keep after Alpaca for a while, but they have a lot of other duties. So the community was much more engaged than the Akka team, I'd say. So since one year back, Lightband decided to have a dedicated Alpaca team, which I lead. Binary and source compatibility are important properties which we want to establish for Alpaca as well, as we have been doing for Akka for quite a while. And the goal with this is to minimize changes users need to apply when upgrading versions. And the binary compatibility gives you the chance to replace a jar, the binary code, within the, with a later version without recompilation of your project. So you can just drop in a new jar and everything's supposed to work. This is extremely important when you have libraries that import on that binary code. So example for, for Akka, that's, that's central to have other libraries depend on that, which you then in turn use. And you can upgrade the Akka version without recompiling the library. Source compatibility, on the other hand, gives you the chance to upgrade and you wouldn't need to do any source changes. To us, binary compatibility is more important than source compatibility, but we try to strive for both. Talking about compatibility, ACA versions are important for Alpaca as well. So for Akka, the, the most important factor is to never blend Akka artifacts of different versions. So if you have Akka Actor 2.5.21, you should have 2.5.21 of all other Akka artifacts. Alpaca 1.0 requires Akka 2.5.21 and uh, as Akka is binary compatible, you can upgrade Akka versions in the 2.5 line without upgrading an Alpaca. Some modules in Alpaca use Akka HTTP and that's the version there we use is 10.1.7. You can upgrade to later versions of the 10.1 release line. So let's talk about what Alpaca contains, what modules are there, what technologies are supported right now by Alpaca. We have a, quite a couple of connectors to cloud services for all three major providers of cloud services um, with AWS, Google Cloud and Microsoft Azure. Quite a few connectors for data stores are in the Alpaca mix today with MongoDB, Cassandra, Couchbase, Elasticsearch. You see it on this slide. Alpaca connectors for messaging are, are available as well. And messaging is, of course, very suitable for the streaming data approach. And that comes quite natural to use the Alpaca streams as well. These logos are not as colorful for some reason. I don't know why. And another group of things in Alpaca are data transformations, where you can take a stream of binary data coming from some source and make sense of it as JSON, and comma separated values, record IO records, or use char set transcoding from different char sets to new ones. 
and we have an XML parser as well, which gives you the events from XML just as a sex parser in form of a stream. So people keep asking me what's coming up next for Alpaca. I'll talk shortly about that now. First of all, we encourage everybody to upgrade to Alpaca 1.0. You might have some changes that are necessary in the code because we changed a lot of APIs to have a more common pattern across Alpaca. And come back with feedback and suggest improvements to the functionality or the APIs. We at Lightband will work on more examples so you can get a sense of how integrations with Alpaca look like and pick code from there. We'll work on the Alpaca Cassandra module with all the learnings we have from the Couchbase module, which was recently added. And we'll follow along with the 2.13 release lines so that you can use the latest and best Scala version available with Alpaca as well. Having said that, the Scala 2.11 line will be supported for quite a while in Alpaca. This is all I had to say today. Please join us in the Alpaca community on GitHub and talk to you soon.